Ludwig and Tarek just hosted the final official Valorant event of the offseason, and it was great. We saw entertaining matches, some funny skits, and it just capped off a wild week in North America in general. So let's get into it. All right, before I get into things, I want to kindly ask that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. I will personally guarantee you a spot in franchising if you do. All right, if you're a fan of North American Valorant, then this past week was a treat. We had challengers qualifiers, some above average Twitter drama, and some hype show matches. You could call it a normal week here in NA to be honest, but I think it's safe to say that everyone is ready for the 2023 season to truly kick off. Challengers qualifiers definitely delivered. We saw some incredible matches from a lot of top tier 2 talent and Breakthrough, Oxygen, and Dark Ratio all managed to qualify. This guy's Toast's roster also made it into Challengers and it was nice to see just how much passion he actually has for the game and Valorant as an esport. And Clear's only able to get one out of it! Ziff! Hands of Steel holding on to Cat. Holding and on from behind that aftershock and now Scuba in a 1v1. Does he have any idea that there's a, that there's a man back? Yeah! Has no idea! Disguise Toast has made it to challengers! Now this is pretty much how I expected things to go. I correctly predicted three out of the four teams in my pick'em, but the Dr. Pepper Demon T-Dog had to f***ing take out Sonics and ruin my bracket. And then he decided to shit all over them on Twitter, which I honestly found f***ing hilarious. If you're watching this the moment it goes up, then the last chance qualifier is already underway. There's still two spots up for grabs, so I'll definitely be keeping my eye on that, but I want to talk more about Twitter, because as the week went on, so did the drama. On Thursday afternoon, Sentinels posted this video to Twitter. Yo Tyson. Yeah? What is this thing? Isn't it obvious? It's our shot buck last year. That's not gonna work this year. But it worked in Iceland. Seems like a typical joke from Sentinels, to be honest. They were just making fun of themselves like they've had to for the past year. But Shazam wasn't too happy about it. Shaz replied to the tweet and said, quote, Oh yeah, one time I spun the wheel and it landed on please play with Shroud. We don't care if you win, just make it hype. We'll personally guarantee you a spot in franchising if you do, end quote. Sentinel CEO Rob Moore then replied, quote, It's weird that since you left, all you talk about is how you want to be with the organization, when for all of 2022, you behaved like you didn't want to be here. It seems like you have returned to the focus you had in 2021. If so, G2 will be in great hands, end quote. Rob even began replying to other comments and suggesting that Shazam was lying when he claimed that he found out that he was off the team while live on Twitch back in October. Shaz then said, quote, Are you actually going to deny promising me a spot if I did you this huge favor? Don't lie to your players. Best of luck to you and your new team, end quote, to which Rob simply denied making that promise. Now, from the outside looking in, it's hard to say what goes on behind the scenes at Sentinels. But what I can say is that after speaking with Shazam many times over the past couple years, I don't find it that hard to believe that he wasn't given the support that he was asking for. Now sure I have to speculate because I don't know what goes on behind closed doors, but I do remember Shaz telling me that they wanted a proper coach like Sean Garris as far back as 2021. Early on, like last year in like August or September, um, he was the one person I wanted as a coach. And like we we're, he's talking to the org and like we we're like he was down and stuff. But then the more we like, Tried to talk about details and stuff in our practice schedule. It just didn't work out. Now back then, Sean turning down that offer makes complete sense. He was still casting events, streaming, and the dude has a family. This was well before he coached 100 Thieves. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure Rockus helped, and Danny is my boy, so I was happy to see them join for part of last season. But last year, Psycho proved that he's the real deal. He helped make Xset one of the best teams in the entire world, so I don't blame Shazam for being upset when the moment he's dropped from the team, they go out and sign a real coach and world-class players. Now once again, I am forced to speculate a bit here, but that's just my two cents. The one thing that this argument did give us is a fresh new meme format, though. So after all this, if NA Valorant fans weren't hyped up enough, Ludwig and Tarek hosted the final official LAN event of the offseason. It was a summit style event with casters and content creators hanging out on couches and watching some pretty solid teams compete for a $50,000 prize pool. The matches went pretty much how I expected. If anything, Sentinels actually surprised me. 
They looked pretty good considering they only had about a week of practice prior to the event. I was unsure how T1 would perform considering they have a bunch of Widowmaker mains and my boy Sunny. They didn't look that great, but I'll cut them some slack since their roster has gone through a lot of changes too. But the true stars of the show were the two challenger teams. Not Ascension by the way. Nobody has qualified for Ascension and nobody will until sometime in July. I saw a lot of people calling the Guard and TSM Ascension teams, so I just wanted to clear that up. Anyways, after getting knocked down into the lower bracket, TSM took down T1 and and won the rematch against Sentinels. I was happy to see that Hazed has continued to prove that he's a fragging IGL, just like he was by the end of last season. And although I always enjoyed watching Seven frag out on duelists, I think he actually played really well in the Sentinel role. But we gotta talk about the guard. The guard are still pretty nasty. Sure, they lost Saya to T1, but Tex is a great player, and it looks like he's slotting in just fine. But this event simply reminded me just how f cracked Trent and Jonah P are. Sure, the whole roster is disgusting, but Trent and Jonah are stars. This is no way. No way. No way. No way. Oh, he might be the MVP. No. He's feeling it. The reposition. Oh, the overpeak. Wait, Sorry, it's all Vito, Trent. Is he not both there? No, he doesn't. Oh my, wait. Oh, oh. oh. oh my oh. god. Get out of here, bro. This guy. This guy He's going back up. He's going back up. Oh. Yeah, they're kind of good at the video game, and Ludwig was loving it. And f your franchise teams, baby, the tier two oh so <laughs> The guard won the grand finals, and overall, Ludwig and Tarek put on an incredible event. It had great vibes, amazing production, and funny skits with some awesome acting from our friend Preeti over at Riot. But this event was just another reminder that everyone's excitement for Valorant Esports hasn't gone anywhere. This was technically the last official event of the offseason, but nearly 200,000 people still showed up to watch partnered teams compete against challengers rosters. And with the lock-in tournament only one month away, I think it's safe to say that everyone is ready for the 2023 season. Well, what did you think about the uh, Sentinels joke? I find it hilarious. Like, I, there's people on the desk for the Ludwig Tarek event and like a guy would be in a clutch and they'd be like, oh, if, if you if you win this, I'll personally guarantee you a spot in franchising. Yeah. That's, that, 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 that's gonna be <laughs> It's so good. People, people it's so good. Like five years. <laughs> I'm gonna say it in like my own magic. <laughs>